Hi, this is MJ with Creative Minds, and today we're going to be talking about glass cabochons and how you can use either acrylic paint or nail polish to paint the back of the glass cabochons to make them look really cool. And the example that we're going to be using today are these eyes, and these you probably can't see as well because they're so tiny, but we do talk about them and we do a little bit of a review on that and these are just tiny little eyes and then there's this big one that we do today so this is the example we're going to be doing today and then we have lots of other examples coming up in the next few minutes for you that you can get ideas from so if you watch this video and we have helped you out in any way please subscribe to our channel for more we do lots of jewelry videos uh, polymer clay videos we incorporate wire at some times and wire weaving as well as we do lots of artwork jewelry mostly so if you are finding that we've helped you out please subscribe to this channel it really will help us know whether we're reaching out to as many people as we can to help more and make more videos because it does take time to produce these videos and and if we help you at all please give us a thumbs up that will let us know that we're helping people uh, along the way so here we go if you want to see how this is made just keep watching and let's get started okay guys I recorded this video and I'm actually doing a second video on it because I just didn't like the way the other one came out so these are cabochons and they're I'm just trying to explain to you right now the cabochons they can be any shape or size these ones here are already painted and uh, they're already done you don't have to do anything to them you can just glue them onto the surface of something and they're ready to go you know for jewelry or for whatever but you can't see through them you know everything on this is already done so this this is just a style you know if you just wanted to add some pizzazz to something or something like that but if you're going into painting or decorating them they do come in colors that are you know they're transparent underneath so you can still paint something on the back of this or put something on the back of this that you'd be able to see through the other side. And I'm going to show you a couple examples. Not of this kind necessarily, but of uh, some, some things that I've done with cabochons before. And all of you pretty probably much have the idea of what you want to do with your cabochons. This right here is a, I believe these are 40 millimeter. It's not 50 millimeter, but I think they're 40 millimeter cabochons. Now these are ordered specifically where you get a certain number of them and they are they're glass cabochons and they come in bulk and you get so many per order and these are these are for example I ordered these I uh, correct myself they're 40 millimeter these are from Elfvis Arts however you say that ordered off of Amazon and I got however many came in this I don't I don't know maybe I don't know how many I got in this to be honest I'd have to go ahead and count uh, maybe 20 20 20 or 25 of these okay for a certain and, and they're not too expensive it was probably like 10 or 12 bucks 10 to 15 bucks or something for that but at any rate what's nice about this kind is that they are perfect uh, you know I guess nothing's perfect but these are close to perfect they are very nicely done on both sides they're they're just they're just nice even in the thickness of it they're all going to be equal whereas you can buy almost the same size cabochon or, or you can get the same size cabochons if you look you know wherever it is you're shopping at that you get a whole bag of these things for like five bucks or something like that even you can find them at the dollar store sometimes but these ones although they're still they're still transparent they're they're still a great surface to use sometimes they can have flaws in them you know little spots on the top that are not even or on the underside you, you can kind of see when I shine the light on that that it's sort of not as even and as shiny as the other one but 
but the tops are more smooth than the bottoms actually and they yield a nice shine and in these although they're not like I say near perfect like these they still work pretty much just the same I have the same effect okay it's just that these are going to be really nice okay and you can see they come in different sizes okay and I have lots and lots of these I have probably a bucket full of these here and then there they come in different shapes as you can see this is oval they even come in rectangular I just ordered some rectangular ones so I don't have one to show you but they do they do come in squares they come in rectangles circles whatever you want and then they have even smaller ones and like I said this one's even really tiny as you can see it's very very small be very hard to do an eyeball on this one <laughs> but it could be done I, I would say nothing's impossible so as I said these these here these oval ones and set these aside these were all ordered in bulk and they're all near perfect I should say okay and you get a certain number I think this one here was this is ordered here let's see what this one is it's from Panda Hall Elite and I got 250 of them in this container of this size right here so and it was probably less than twenty dollars you know and this lasts me a good long time so anyway that being said that's a little bit to explain about the cabochons and the pupils are harder to do depending on what kind of pupils you do if you're doing eyes um, the smaller that they get of course they're going to be harder to do so that being said that is explaining a little bit about the capuchons and I hope that's helped you a little bit if you didn't know much about them now you know a little bit and where to go to order these things okay now when we're talking about painting the capuchons you can do one of two things you can use nail polish and if we're talking about eyes I wanted to, to, to let you know we have there's black this is just plain black and then and I also am using this to show you there's two different kinds of brushes that you get with the nail polish and there's your standard brush here that's going to just be like a nail polish brush but when you buy them to do like the nail art the brushes in these are longer and thinner probably easier to work with as far as making your you're going to be painting something small <laughs> this might work for you a little better or it might be easier for you to use these I don't know whatever works for you I was just showing you the difference in the brushes but these work great for works great for pupils the only thing I would say is that it's very hard to control these brushes when making pupils at least for me it is so a lot of times I will go ahead and just use acrylic paint for the pupils because with that I can use a nice very small brush and let's say, show you the size of that just a real uh, pinpoint um, small brush and I'm able to really hone in here's another example of a brush here really hone in on the pupil so it's a lot easier to work with when you have this much space here it's a lot easier to work with a, a brush that's really tiny to get in there and make your pupil okay you've got more control when you can hold the brush like this as opposed to holding the brush like this okay so um, you just have more control when it's like a more like a pencil or a pen you know you can just hone in on there so that's that's totally up to you the acrylic paint will work on these cabochons just like the nail polish does you can use also when you get done with the pupils you and you're painting the rest of the eye you can use acrylic paint as well and acrylic paint can come in some really nice especially with eyes if you're speaking eyes or anything luminescent or pearlescent or anything like that this is a great product right here these paints right here they're called Jacquard Lumiere and Neopaque paints and they come in all kinds of colors that are just an array of pearlescent like colors and they also make one for um, halo and jewelry jewel colors which are another group of different blends of colors that are just gorgeous 
like blue green and pink gold for example like you can kind of see this one here this one here is two-toned you can see some pink over here and up here and then yet you see some gold over here so they're beautiful when you shake them up and you use them and these are just just something that goes really well with the, with the, and it only takes a little bit of this paint it goes a long way and this is just another example of the paints that you can use for your for your eyes but that being said you can also use just a tube of acrylic paint and mix and match your colors as you would using primary secondary tertiary colors to go ahead and mix up your own blends to make your own colors up or sometimes you can buy a kit of acrylic paints that are already colored and some of them you can find metallic-y looking as well i do have a kit of acrylic paints that are kind of metallic-y glittery whatever you want to call it but if you're going to work with nail polish now the pupils being done and set aside if you're going to work with nail polish you're going to want really pearly colors if you're going with pupils like these colors that i'm showing you here these examples they're very pearlescent, so you can go with any shade. They're just a great example of, ah, fly away. Okay, great example of what you can use for colors. You want very pearlescent versus having something that's, oh, this is a pretty color too, this purple one here. But as opposed to having just a plain Jane, I don't have an example, but a matte, like this color here is just, you know, would be black, you know. You just, you have more of a pearlescent color. It just looks really pretty in the light. So they work great for eye colors. Now, that being said, if you're gonna use a scratch method, which we'll talk about later for making pupils, the nail polish works better than the acrylic paint. I will say that. But you can do it with acrylic paint as well. Another choice of colors that, with Dan, I just have tons of nail polish. I just, I just pulled out a few. Oh, this one's pretty too. This is another example of some pearlescent color. But, you know, they're just examples for you to see. You know, this looks better than a white. You know, it's a really pretty pearlescent white. Then they have the two-tone colors or three-tone colors, which like this one here is called Cameo. And it's made by ILNI. This one is really cool because it's a holographic color. So it's going to change and sometimes it looks purple, sometimes it looks green. It depends on which way the light is catching it. And it's really, it's really looking very purple right now, but I'm trying to catch the light in different ways for you. But it's looking very purple, but it does look green. And sometimes I thought I just saw a flash of green there for you, but it does. It changes kind of color with, and this is a great example of a color to use for like painting eyes or painting, you know, something that you want depth and person personality with. This is a great kind of color to use. If you're gonna use glitters at all, like this looks like just glitter, but this actually, if you look real close at it, it has stars in it. Now, I don't know if you want stars in your eye color, but you gotta look very closely. Some of the glitter is gonna have very big, and I don't know if you can see this or not. You might be able to see better in this example here. But some of these, of the, gla of the dots in there, the glitter dots, the flakes themselves, they're rather large. And if you're working with a very small eye, I mean, those large flakes really take up a lot of room. So what you might want to do for eyes is to stay away from the larger flakes of glitter like that and go with a very, and this is kind of to show you, this is just as shiny and sparkly, but it's a very fine glitter. And that's even this one here. This one here is a very, very fine glitter. You can barely see that it's even a glitter, but it is. It's a glitter. It's a very fine glitter. This is not as fine, but it's fine enough. It doesn't have any of those big chunks in it. So you're gonna wanna watch with your glittery polishes that you don't get too large of a flake. You want a fine, fine glitter for it. Here's another example of a really fine glitter. And this is really pretty on a cabbage, just to let you know. It's really, really pretty. My favorite of all would be this here. It's called Holochrome. And it's made by Clean Color, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Clean Color. And this is just a gorgeous color when you paint it on. It's extremely 3D. I do have some examples for you that I'll be showing you in a moment. So this is my favorite 
I'm surprised it's not empty. I will be ordering more of this. So that's it for um, color basics. And as I said, with acrylic paint, it's basically just mixing your own colors for that. So let's move on. Okay, I didn't get everything out. I'm just showing you an example. And please excuse me because when I work with very small things, except for clay, I seem to be able to do a little bit better with the clay. But when I'm talking about painting very small things, I'm not the best at it yet. I'm kind of newer to the um, field of painting small areas, like, like getting them pupils and, and stuff like that, and getting them completely straight and the reason being I think because I started with nail polish only and then when I started using the acrylic like this example here is with the acrylic I believe I used acrylic on this one and this however has acrylic pupils uh, nail polish pupils and then the acrylic around it but I just wanted to show you some things you could do with painting cabochons these are examples of eyes obviously and then here's an example of that holochrome that I told you about. You see how 3D that looks and just how really pretty that looks. The back of it is painted, I think, three layers, three times with that paint. And that's it. There was nothing else added. So it's actually, when you hold it up to the light, it's actually a little bit translucent. So I haven't coated this with black or anything to close it out. But that's where we're at with that. And what you can make out of that is either a necklace, a pendant, or this is an example of a ring right here. Now, this would be a very large ring, but all that being said, it's still a ring. It's quite a conversation piece, actually, really. So that's up to you what you want to do with them or what your purposes are going to be with them. But that is something that you can do. This is that purple that I showed you, this purple glitter mixed with a lighter purple glitter. And when I turn it, you can kind of see the lighter purple and then the darker purple behind it. And then it's topped off with some black nail polish, okay? So that's what you get out of that effect. And it's kind of a neat effect. This is the same, only on the back, I think I did a little bit different. It looks all black, but underneath this layer, I have black and then I have like a stripe of a lighter color going through that. So that's the example of that. This one here has some mica powder. I believe the, the color of the mica powder is Hot Mama. And that is what I used first on this. And then I used nail polish on top of that to seal it with the red polish. And I didn't cover that in black or anything, but that's, that's what I did with this one. And it's pretty cool looking. An example of what you can do with that is like this ring right here which was made actually in a set with a, a cabochon. This is the pendant that I made with, to go with that. And it was kind of like a Christmas type thing to wear with a Christmas sweater. And so um, that just gives you an example of how you can put those together with some Swarovski crystals and some polymer clay and then making your own little set. And they also have earrings to go with those, which I don't have those handy right now, but they do have a set of earrings to go with them. So that's what you can do if you're making jewelry. It turn, They turn out really nice with that. Mica powder and nail polish and stuff, you can make your own stones. This is an example of just painting something on it. I sort of just did acrylic paint and nail polish and I used like, sort of a for the face I used sort of like a stained glass looking paint and then around the sides I used some glitter polish and some of the acrylic paint as well so it made kind of a neat looking cabochon and you can see on the back where I had done all the areas of paint I have not sealed this one off in black yet sort of still the way it is. <laughs> so that's just some examples of what you can do with your painted cabochon or how you can paint them for different reasons. And I'm going to show you some examples of what I've done with the painted cabochons besides the jewelry. Okay guys, so these are so cute. And mind you, I'm newer at this, so just bear with me here. You guys are probably experts and you're gonna go, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? But here's the first one that I did. This was the very first eyeball thing that I did. This is a dragon's eye. And you can make them however you want because dragons are, of course, in the fantasy realm and they're, well, they're whatever you want them to be. 
So I made this dragon's eye out of a 40 millimeter cabochon that I painted with nail polish first. And there are layers and layers and layers of nail polish and it does a lot. There's this technique that I call scratching that you use to make this eye with just all the different colors in it. And so uh, it's a very long, uh, you know, it's a, it's a long, longer process than just painting your pupil and then putting a color on it. So, but anyhow, that's how I got this dragon eye pendant and it, it's actually, this would be the top, this is the top of it here and this would be, this is the bottom. So, these are kind of like, I don't know if these are like eyebrows or did I want them, they're not lashes, I guess they're sort of like a thorny eyebrow, I don't know. But anyhow, that's the first, first thing that I ever did and I think it turned out pretty, pretty decent and what I did was I made it into a magnet. So it's, the back is textured on this one and it's on my fridge and that's, it works really well and it, it's a real big conversation piece. Everybody seems to really like it. Next, I made this really interesting guy here. This is my octopus and he's cute. And like I said, I made him with polymer clay and he's got those those glass eyes and he, the he was made with my favorite color this holochrome that i told you about and that's what's in his eyes i'm trying to catch them in the light see if you can see that but that's what i made him out of and actually i made a video of this the making of this octopus so you could follow along if you wanted to make one like that and he's also a magnet i didn't finish the back on this one but he's on my fridge and he's a magnet so this is just a cute way of he's holding it's really cool because these little little glass bottles that he's got here and here they actually have like notes in them <laughs> I wrote on these little pieces of paper that I had and I wrote like help I'm stranded on an island on this one and this one says I miss you I love you you know it's just you can put whatever you want in there and seal it up and it'll stay there forever or until somebody finds it and opens it and reads your business I guess I don't know so anyway he's kind of cute you know he's he's holding a bunch of things in his arms and I just think he was kind of cute so look for that video that I made on this if you want to make one of these after you make some some glass eyes or whatever that you if you want to make an octopus it'll show you how to do that and lastly I'm not finished with this one yet I'm sort of mid-stage but I did not record this one this is my little owl that I am working on right now he's not finished he's not completely set in stone yet he's got some work to be done I have some work to do on the on the wood branch here and on him on him as well I'm not totally finished with him but his eyes uh the eyeballs are <laughs> finished and those are two cabs that i did with acrylic paint and possibly nail polish but just to give you an example of another thing that you can do they make great eyes they really do and this is also going to be a magnet as you can see i've got one two three magnets here and one on the back here and it's really cool because if you wanted to hang like post-it notes or something you'd have a couple of different spots to put them and he's really cute on the refrigerator because I have him up there when he's drying and and whatnot and and, and then when I'm finished with him that's where he's going to be so uh, unfortunately I didn't do a video for this one but I will for the next one I'm not an expert at making creatures so this is my you know first attempts at doing things and I have never done it before so I'm trying to get a little bit more of a knowledge base before I go and you know put too much out there but on it but I'm having fun doing it and uh, so if you're interested in seeing more tutorials about these uh, how to do these type of things let me know and I'd be sure to I'd be glad to tape it and put it out there for you on how, I, how I'm doing this anyways but if not that's fine too so just that's what I do with these with the eye that's what I've been doing with the eye things I just want to keep you updated on that so and I guess that wraps everything up on the information about cabs that I have and then so basically we could get started making one okay so let's get started